Can't Do Faith. It's Sunday morning, and it's time for worship. Listen, we are so glad that you are tuning in with us. We invite you to click that like button, click that share button, and help us spread the good news of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Listen, we've come to the combination of our Summer Shift 2020. We hope the last few days have been a blessing to you and your family. And today, we hope nothing else but more blessings to both you, your family, and your friends. So sit back, relax, and prepare yourself for a word from the Lord. Enjoy today's service. Come on, praise the Lord, new faith. Come on and give God glory. Come on and give him praise. He deserves the glory. He deserves the honor. There is nobody greater than our God. Oh God, we thank you for being such an amazing God. Oh God, we open up our mouths and we say thank you. We say hallelujah. We say glory to your name. Oh God, we lift our hands, God. Oh God, we wave our hands because God, we realize that there's nobody greater than you. Oh God, we bless you and we give you the glory. We bless you and we give you the glory. There's nobody greater than you. Oh God, we lift you up. Even in your homes, you can begin to give God praise. You can begin to give God glory because he is a way maker. He is a way maker. He is a miracle worker. Hallelujah, he is a light in darkness. Oh God, that's who you are. That's who you are. You are Jehovah Jireh. You are Jehovah Sick Canoe. You are Jehovah Shalom. And we give you praise. And we give you the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let your glory fill this place. Let your glory fill this place. Let your glory fill this place. Let your glory fill this place, God. Fill this place, God. Dwell in this place, God. Dwell in this place. Fill this tabernacle. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We give you glory. We give you glory. We give you glory, hallelujah. Oh God, because you are the way maker. Oh God, oh you are here, turning lives around. Oh God, you are here working in our midst. And we worship you, God. And we worship you. Can you just lift your hands and begin to worship him, even in your home? Come on and just begin to tell God how much you love him. Tell him how much you appreciate him. Come on and love on him, worship him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you. You are here. Moving in our midst. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, turning lives around. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, mending broken hearts. I worship you. I worship you. You. you are here, rearranging destinies. I worship you. Oh, I worship you. Yes, God. And we call you way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Come on, you can lift it up. Come on and say it. Wait, maker. Wait, maker. Hear the word. Promise me. Light. Light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Come on, say it. 
one more time like you really mean it. Say, Waymaker. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that, that is who you are. One more time, you are. Thank you. 
It's not because we kept ourselves, it's because you kept us, and you kept us with keeping power. Father, the world is looking right now, and they're asking, what do we say to these things? What do we say to political injustice? What do we say to financial difficulty? What do we say to sickness and illness that is covering the world today? Well, Father, we're grateful that you told us in Romans 8 what to say. You say, if God be for us, he's more than the world against us. Father, we want to thank you that you're for us. We want to thank you that you have keeping power. Father, right now we come before you lifting you up because you're just worthy to be praised. Look at how you kept us. Look at your power in the middle of this pandemic. We know that you got pandemic power. We know that you got pandemic keeping power because we are living witnesses that you kept us for another week. Father, we just want to give you praise, glory, and honor for all that you're doing. Father, right now, we ask that you continue to keep a hedge of protection around the new faith family. We ask that you cover our pastor and keep him strong as he continues to lead us in this time. Father, we don't just pray for the new faith church. We pray for all church doors that stand open in your name. We pray, Father, that every pastor, preacher, teacher, that they yield to the Holy Spirit and proclaim the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. 
Now, Father, there's going to be a word that's going to be preached in a few minutes. We ask that you cover the preacher that will, will claim and carry your word. We ask that you keep him as only you can, Father. We want you to know that you are a way maker, a miracle worker, and a promise keeper. We are living witnesses that you've made a way. We are living witnesses that you are a promise keeper. And, Father, we just want to say thank you. As we go about this service, Father, we ask that you have your way. Do what you need to do, Father, to draw us closer to you. Do whatever you have to do, Father, to make us understand that you are in complete control as we go through what we go through as a nation, as a family, and as a church. Father, we know that you have keeping power, and we just want to celebrate you. Thank you, Father, for your keeping power. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your love, and thank you for your power. As we move forward in this worship experience, Father, we just want you to know that you know we know that you are an awesome God, and we just want to celebrate you because you kept us, and you didn't have to do it. You just did it because you are keeping God, and we just want to celebrate you right now and say thank you. Father, clearly, there are things that we failed to mention in this particular altar prayer. But, Father, we ask that you do not fail to provide comfort for those who need comfort. We ask that you do not fail to provide peace for those who are in need of peace. We ask that you do not fail to provide financial uh, restoration to those who are in need of a financial blessing. We know that you are able, and we know that you will because you're just a good God. And, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we pray right now and commit this worship service to you and say thank you and amen. He won't give up on you. He's able. Oh, he's able. No. Oh, so God is able to do just what He said. blessing to know that we serve a God who is yet able. Even in this pandemic, God has shown himself to be an able God. And certainly we give him praise, honor, and glory. Well, listen, family, it is preaching time, and we have a part excellent preacher in the person of Bishop Rudolph McKissick, Jr., all the way from the Bethel Church of Jacksonville, Florida. I'm looking forward to hearing a word from him to hear how God is going to move in a miraculous way in this summer series shifting in 2020. I pray that the message that he's going to preach is going to be a blessing to you, and not only to you, but also to your family. Listen as he preaches God's word. 
This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and we will be glad in it. We give all honor to the Spirit of Christ. Let me first and foremost honor my, my little brother, the wonderful pastor of the New Faith Church, Dr. Andre Jermaine Lewis. Thank him for this opportunity. We missed May. I don't know when I've missed revival at New Faith. We weren't able to do it because of this pandemic. And so when Dr. Lewis called me recently and was like, man, I still want to do something, let the folks see your face. I, I gladly, no, what he really said was, would you be willing? And I responded, are you kidding me? Willing, ready, and able. That song y'all used to sing with Ronald Mattel. I think that was willing, able. Y'all know that song. He's waiting to do what you need him to do for you. I was ready, willing, and able. And so I want to honor he and Lady Lewis and thank God for both of them and the wonderful work they continue to do at the New Faith Church and to my big brother, who my wife and I love and my children love so dearly. He's Uncle Teddy to them. He's Teddy and TR to me, and your pastor emeritus, Reverend Dr. T.R. Williams and Lady Williams. We honor both of them and thank God for their place in our lives and our place in their lives and for the New Faith Church and that even virtually we are still able to connect. But I, I speak with great faith and anticipation and expectation that next year we will see each other in person and not just on the screen. And so, God, we thank you for moments where even through the medium of technology, we are still able to carry your gospel into the world. And thank you for new faith and for the opportunity to continue to share with them and for the incredible fellowship and family friendship that has been forged through the years that has yet continued on through Dr. Lewis. And now bless your servant. Let the word that shall be shared and preached and taught be a blessing to all who shall hear. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 15, is our text for today. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 15, beginning at verse 21. Matthew, chapter 15, verse 21. 21 and there you'll find these words then Jesus went out from there and departed to the region of Tyre and Sidon and behold a woman of Canaan came from that region and cried out to him have mercy on me O Lord son of David my daughter is severely demon possessed but he answered her not a word his disciples came and urged him saying send her away for she cries out after us but he answered and said, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then she came and worshiped him and said, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, it is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. She said, yes, Lord. Yet even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said to her, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. I want to preach under the aid and unction and power of God's Holy Spirit with this thought in our minds, crumb snatchers, crumb snatchers in in his book men to men henry lee allen observes that many of the most successful people or organizations in the world either failed many times took several risks or both before they reached achievement allen goes on in the book to define risk as having the faith to attempt something new or different even though 
it might be hard or lead to failure. He maintains in the book that risk, contrary to popular definition or assumption, risk is not reckless because recklessness requires little or no forethought. In contrast, those who take risks are aware while and before taking the risk that they face enormous obstacles towards their achievement. But Allen goes on to say in conclusion that in spite of the knowledge and the recognition of the enormity of the challenge, the reward is always worth the effort. The entirety of the story in which we read tonight is built around risk and the potential for failure. If the truth be told, this woman could have been a microcosmic example in any chapter in Allen's book when he talks about risk. Because in the text, we find a mother who comes to Jesus on behalf of her daughter who is possessed by a demon. Everything about this woman implies that she is in the wrong place at the wrong time, show sure enough talking to the wrong person. She's a Canaanite, as we see. She's a Syrophoenician by background. And I want you to notice the words of the text very carefully. The text says that Jesus has gone into this area called Tyre and Sidon, or Tyre and Sidon, both which are Gentile cities in Phoenicia and were often the object of ridicule and condemnation by the prophets of the Old Testament for their worship of Baal and their arrogant materialism. Jesus goes into this region where he meets this Syro-Phoenician Canaanite woman. And all of this lets us know that this woman comes to Jesus out of desperation. The fact that she's a Canaanite, the fact that he's a Jewish teacher, the fact that she is of Syrophoenician descent and yet comes to this Jewish rabbi lets us know that this is more a last ditch effort than it is a first option solution. She calls Jesus by this messianic title, the son of David, hoping like many of us do sometime that if you say the right words, you'll get the desired response. And here comes this out of place mother pleading for something from Jesus for a child who has gone off the deep end. It is intercession on behalf of a child who cannot intercede for themselves. Hear that again. It's the intercession of a parent who cannot or of a parent of a child rather who cannot intercede for themselves. I don't know about you, but I'm thankful that in seasons when I would not or could not intercede for myself, I had praying parents who knew how to go to God on my behalf. The old church put it this way. Somebody prayed for me, had me on their mind, took the time and prayed for me. And is there anybody listening to me today, wherever you might be in your home or on your job or in your car that could take a minute, give God a quick amen that when you weren't praying for yourself, you had somebody interceding on your behalf. This daughter is so far gone, so out there, so under the control of something else that she can't pray for herself. Everything about what she does is risky. Everything about what the woman tries is risky. But when it comes to moves of faith, when you are in need of a miracle, it is always worth the risk. Je Jesus moves this woman, if you were to read the text, he moves the woman from desperation to development to devotion. Write it down somewhere. He moves the woman from desperation to development to devotion. Why? Because at the end of the day, 
it's not about healing her daughter as much as it is about getting the woman in faith because Jesus is not after getting you blessed Jesus is after getting you in faith because he can bless you and you not be in faith and then he blesses you but he still doesn't have you he would rather work on you get you in faith so that when he blesses you you not only knew who to give credit to but he now has you in relationship his first concern is not your need but your faith and your faith will put you in position to meet your need I want to say that one more time the concern of Jesus is not your need but your faith because if your faith is right your faith will put you in position for him to meet your need that's that's the power of faith beloved it allows yes faith allows for the transformation of conditions and circumstances and situations in the natural realm. When you don't walk by faith, you deny God the platform of your life to show others what is possible for them. When you don't walk by faith, you will rob yourself of the experience needed for future challenges. When you don't walk by faith, you afford the enemy the chance to rejoice over victories that should have been yours. When you don't walk by faith, you cannot please God. And if you don't please God, God can't reward you because without faith, it is impossible to please the Lord. This was a mother that ended up being a, a woman of faith and not just a woman of desperation. And it's a word for all of us today because so often we come to the Lord out of desperation and not out of devotion. We come to the Lord because we want a quick fix. We come to the Lord because we want a quick change. But at the end of the day, what the Lord is after is not changing your situation, but changing your life. Because if he changes your life, he'll give you what you need to change your situation. Look, look at the text look at the text for me and notice notice some things I need just a little more in this monitor notice some things in the text don't make the mistake watch this of mistaking the silence of an answer for the lack of a solution hmm. I'm gonna say that one more time don't don't mistake the silence of of an answer for the lack of a solution lord have mercy one more time don't ever when it comes to jesus mistake the silence of an answer for the lack of a solution read the text if you will the woman comes to jesus and says have mercy upon me O lord thou son of david uh, my daughter is grievously vexed, one translation says. She is demon-possessed. And the text says, wait it, Jesus did not answer her a word. Okay, um, let's work it. Um, Jesus did not say no. He said nothing. <laughs> Look at it again. He, he didn't say no. He just didn't say anything. Hmm. And know today, when Jesus says nothing, he's still up to something. Yeah, it, and if you've got to make the decision and you've got to make the choice to be patient enough to stay there and see what he's up to. I'm talking to somebody today. You think because you haven't heard an answer that that means the Lord has forgotten you. I'm talking to somebody today. You think because the Lord has not responded that the Lord is saying no. And I came by to let you know today don't you ever mistake God's silence for the lack of a solution. Don't you ever think that just because he hadn't said anything that that means he's not up to anything. Just because he hadn't said anything doesn't mean he's not doing anything. He didn't say no. He just didn't say anything. To anybody that would have been listening to her, on either side, they, they, they would have told her to, 
to shut up. Or she's crazy. You, you know how you have friends when they know what you've been praying for and seems like the Lord still hadn't answered it and they come by with their theology to say to you, child, that must mean that just ain't for you. They come by and say, child, that must mean God got something else for you. They come by and say, child, that must mean it must not be in the Lord's will for your life. They are just like these disciples. When these disciples notice that Jesus did not answer her, they made some assumptions. They made an assumption. She's a woman. He should and talk to her because he's a teacher they made an assumption she's a gentile he's a jew she's beneath him he ought not say anything and they made the assumption that because jesus was silent they could speak oh god and look at what they said they said get rid of her we know you don't want to bless her because you ain't said nothing to her we know you don't want to help her because you're quiet we know you don't want to help her because you haven't responded to her her, get rid of her because she's crying out after us but the reality is she wasn't talking to them in the first place she didn't come and say have mercy upon me y'all she said have mercy upon me you and if I'm not talking to you then what you say has no right in the conversation see you really don't have a right to talk to me if you ain't been through what I'm going through you really don't have a right to say anything to me if you don't don't understand my pain if you don't understand my position that's why all of these dialogues I'm seeing with black preachers and white preachers it's nice it's cute all of these dialogues I'm seeing with multicultural stages it's nice and it's cute but at the end of the day if you ain't never been oppressed you can't understand it if you've never been whipped you can't understand it if you've not been called out your name you can't understand it if you've never been the last hired and the first fired you can't understand it and you don't get the right to determine how hard I go after my blessing if you've never been through what I'm going through you better understand you you haven't really gone after a blessing until you offend somebody and if your compliments didn't make me, then your criticism sure enough can't kill me. Here's the other thing before I move uh, to another point. They, they, they mistake the silence of the Savior as his displeasure and disapproval. Disapproval, that's why they feel justified and correct in their chastising of the situation. They have no idea that Jesus is not denying her. He is developing her. See, that's why you can't judge what the Lord is up to in my life by what things look like from your perspective. <laughs> that, that, that's why you can't judge what the Lord is doing with me by giving me your perspective of my situation don't don't you define me best based on your assumptions from your observations because just because he hasn't said anything doesn't mean he ain't on the case he's always up to something even when it appears he's up to nothing and I want to tell somebody if he hadn't answered your prayer yet you just stay right there in faith because they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength they'll mount up with wings as eagles run and not get weary walk and not faint I don't care if he hadn't answered yet you stay right there because his silence doesn't mean he ain't working for you and God if y'all were in new faith right now if you were in a church right now I'd tell you to turn to your neighbor but since you can't do it just text your neighbor and tell him please be patient with me God ain't through with me yet I know he's quiet I know he's silent I know he ain't saying nothing but God is working on something on my behalf let, let, let me move on um secondly she is persistent in her plea she here's what I love about the woman with all the odds against her with everybody having an opinion about her she never lost focus I've discovered, y'all, that one of the characteristics of healthy faith is that it never 
loses focus. One of the characteristics of healthy faith is that healthy faith knows how to manage potential distractions. She got distractions all around her. She, she got the distraction of the Savior's silence. She's She's got the distraction of the dialogue of dumb disciples. She's, she's got distractions everywhere you turn. She's, she's got the distraction and the issue of her own identity. She, she's got the distraction of being a mother wondering how her child is doing since she has left the house. But in spite of every distraction all around her, she never loses her focus. That's what I want to say even to black folk. Don't you lose your focus. They've got distractions distractions all around us Kanye running for president pulling down statues uh, don't y'all get distracted uh, you've got to keep your focus and keep your eyes on the prize for what we know we are after watch the text the woman shows us that she refuses to let anything break her faith even when things don't look like they're going her way because finally Jesus breaks he breaks the silence and he said, well, we got a problem. <laughs> I was only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Translation, um, I'd bless you if I could, but you don't qualify for the blessing. Oh, Jesus. I'd give you the house if I could, but your credit don't qualify. I'd I'd let you ride off the lot with the car if I could. Yeah. Uh, but your credit doesn't qualify. I, I, I'd let you have the job if I could. Mm, but your education uh, does not qualify. God help me in here. He says, I, I would help you if I could. But you don't, you don't qualify. And that's when the woman blew my mind this time. Tech says, even after further insults, I love the way the New King James puts it. She came and worshipped him. Hmm. She's gone from shouting at him to worshipping him. Now here's what's deep. She worships him and still doesn't have what she asked for. Hmm. She, <laughs> she's been insulted now twice. She's gotten silence. And yet she comes and worships Jesus without a guarantee on her original request. Hey, hey, here's my question for you. Will you still worship when you don't get the job? When, when, you, when you don't get the the raise. Will, will you still worship when you don't qualify for the house? Will, will you still worship when you can't find your purpose? Will you still worship when things still don't go your way? And I know I'm messing with some of us now because many of us use worship as a tool of manipulation because we've been taught some supercilious theology like when the praises go up, the blessings come down. If you shout loud enough, Things are going to change. We've been rooted and grounded uh, in emotional theology that says to us, the next three people that yell, God says, if you yell, all your troubles are going to go away. And we have made people believe that if you worship him, he'll give you what you want. But the object of worship is not to get your needs met. The object of worship is to declare, I know who he is. Even if I'm broke, even if I'm unemployed, even if I'm divorced, even if my family walks away from him can I tell you the kind of worshiper that scares the devil the worshiper that scares the devil ain't the worshiper that worship is when you get something the kind of worship that scares the devil is that Job kind of worship when you've lost everything and yet you can say the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away blessed be the name of the Lord can you worship God when you think God has taken everything from your life Woo. I was trying to figure out I was trying to figure out what would make her so tenacious I mean you you done got insulted you done got dogged and 
yet you've got this, this tenacity. I'm trying to figure out what is making you so tenacious. And then it hit me. She's probably a single mother because otherwise, by law, it would have been the father in the conversation with Jesus. So my exegetical deduction is she's a single mother with a daughter who is demon possessed and nothing has worked for her. She, she's used. Here's what I think. Single mother with a jacked up daughter, which means she's used to having to fight through rejection and challenges, Jesus. She's used to fighting through insults. She's used to fighting through disrespect. She's used to fighting through opposition. See, the devil has no idea that every struggle that has been in your path was just teaching you how to be resilient. You, you've been hearing no all your life and it ain't never stopped you. There's a resilient spirit in you that has learned how to hang in there even when you get a no. Is there anybody watching me that's got the nerve to type somewhere? I am resilient. And everything I've been through has done nothing but make me stronger. That's why haters don't like you. Because they know everything you've been through. And in some instances, they know everything they've done to you. But what they did not realize is that while they were trying to destroy you, God was using it to develop you. You done heard no all your life. You done been called names all your life. You've been told all your life you couldn't do it. Ain't nothing gonna stop you. Because you've learned through your life every no ain't a no and every closed door ain't shut you've gotten resilient look at this woman she ain't got no resume she claimed no heritage she ain't got no earned degrees she had only two things going for her that kept her going here it is her child was weak but Jesus was strong. God help me. That's all she got going for her. Her child was weak, yes. But Jesus was strong. And, and she came begging, the text says. Because when your child is at stake, you ain't got room for pride. When, when you are desperate enough and your family is on the line, you, you ain't got time to be cute. When you're desperate and your family is at stake, you ain't got time to be bougie. I wish I had somebody. When your family is at stake you ain't got time to care what other people have to say about you you have to lose your pride as a matter of fact some of y'all ought to lose your pride in your house and ain't nobody there but jump up out your seat and just start running uh, like you ain't got time for pride my family is at stake my marriage is at stake my child is at stake my mind is at stake and whatever I got to do to get this blessing uh, that's what I'm going to do you, 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 you got, you got no pride. You, 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 you ought to be making the sacrifice right now as a parent, saying, even if I can't do it for me, do something for my child. Uh, you ought to be saying that right now. Uh, Lord, don't do it for me. Do it for my child. I'm not letting my child go to drugs. I'm not letting my child go to gangs and bad grades and disrespectful attitudes and sexual promiscuity. My child is on the line and I will not rest until my child gets free. I'm done. I'm done. His last thing. His last thing I won't tell you in my empty sanctuary pre-recording and I'm making my own self happy. Um, here's the last thing I won't tell you. Um, when God says no, look for God's instead. So, so first, the Lord is silent. Then the Lord qualifies a no. First said nothing. Then when he said something, it was as if he said nothing. Because he said, I'm going to say something, but I still can't bless you. When, when, when the Lord says no, <laughs> look for the Lord's instead. Jesus. Um, Y'all know the story. She, uh, he comes and he said, look, woman, I, I see you begging and I see you worshiping and all of that. But, but I can't take the children's bread and, 
throw it to the dogs. He just, he just in, in a kind of metaphorical and simile kind of way, gives a recapitulation of the qualification he'd already given. He'd already said, I've only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. She comes and worships. So Jesus said, well, maybe she didn't quite get what I was saying. So let me put it where she can get it. I can't take what belongs to the children and give some of it to the pets in the house, Jesus. I can't give it to the dogs. He, we know in, in the biblical day that Gentiles were, were referred to as dogs because of their spiritual condition being unclean and separated from God. But, but, but you got to understand, um, um, she, this woman understood something because he uses the diminutive te tense in the Greek that implies house puppy. Mm. Now, I don't know if y'all ever had puppies. I've had puppies right now. I got a dog in the house. My son graduated from college, came home with a pit bull mixed with lab. He's the biggest thing. He's not, he's not a dog. He's a horse. He's a horse. He's a, he's a horse. His name is Huncho. He's a, he's a horse. And he's a house dog. He's a house dog. He, he don't look like a house dog. He don't bark like a house dog. He ain't got teeth like a house dog, but he, he's a house dog. And, and the thing I've noticed about Huncho that was even true about Chico. Chico was my, my poodle that died about two years ago. He died about two years ago. I got his ashes sitting on the bookcase. Um, but Yeah, but he died. But uh, one thing both of them got in common because they house dogs. Uh, whenever we get to the table to eat, yes, Lord have mercy, both of them because they know they're a house dog. Mm, Chico used to do it. Huncho does it now. They come in the kitchen. God help me in here today because they feel as if I'm part of the family. So whatever you got on the table. Uh, while I can't get all of it, uh, I at least ought to have a right to some of it. Y'all ain't hearing me. They know they can't sit at the table. He knows he can't jump in my lap. He knows he can't have my whole plate. But because he lives in the house, he feels like whatever is on your plate, if you just drop a little bit of it on the floor, I'll take it and go on my merry way. That's what this woman said. This woman said, I I don't need it all Lord all I need is a crumb I don't need everything you give them I just need you to give me a crumb in other words I'll take whatever you give me I won't be jealous of what they get I won't be mad because of what she gets I won't be angry because of how you do him I'll take whatever you give me I'll be a crumb snatcher that's all I've been trying to tell you for 35 minutes minutes uh, that I'll be a crumb snatcher. See, see what I see here uh, is a power to make a crumb uh, everything I need in the house. Uh, here's a mother uh, who is willing uh, to work with the crumbs she got. Uh, it's the power of a crumb. Uh, and we live in a society now y'all where everybody spends their time uh, in victimization and comparison and competition uh, but every now and then uh, you've got to know the power of a crumb uh, to make happen what you need uh, she banked her miracle uh, on a crumb uh, there was enough power in that crumb uh, coupled with her faith uh, to drive the devil out of her daughter uh, she got a devil chasing experience uh, all because of one crumb uh, can I tell you one crumb yes uh, can heal your house I want to talk to some mother right now. I want to talk to some parent right now who's been able to make your house work on a crumb. You don't have what others have. You may not be invited to the table because of misogynistic practices in the workplace. For everybody else, just like in the text, the issues of your race keep you from the benefits of the table. And as black folk, we show enough know what it feels like uh, to be on the menu uh, instead of being at the table uh, but we can testify today uh, black folk we crumb snatchers uh, we know how to make it work with what we get uh, I look 
better than my bank account because I'm a crumb snatcher. I'm making it work in my house on the little bit of piece of check I got because I'm a crumb snatcher. I make hand-me-downs look like a tailor-made suit because I'm a crumb snatcher. I make the best, yes, out of a bad situation because I'm a crumb snatcher. I put my children through college and still don't know how I did it because I'm a crumb snatcher. You don't make much money yet your children have never gone without because you're a crumb snatcher. I refuse to complain because my faith is strong enough to believe that there's power in the crumbs I get. Some people, yes, have more joy with the crumbs than other folk got with the whole loaf. It's because of where my crumbs come from. Somebody knows what it means to live on your crumbs. Somebody can shout right now because you've made it on your crumbs. But I can't leave y'all there because if I leave y'all there, you stay beneath the table. If I leave you there, you got to sit down at the chair under the table. But I'm so glad that on a hill called Calvary, Jesus Christ took me from under the table and put me at the table. Jesus Christ took me from being a dog to being a son of human. Is there anybody here who can say, I thank God I lived on the crumbs long enough for Jesus to put me at the table. Now I don't beg for crumbs. Now I don't think all I can have is crumbs. But I say bread of heaven. Bread of heaven. Feed me till I won't no more. Come on, I know you're in your house. Or I know you're in your car. But I dare you to throw your hands in the air and just say bread of heaven. Bread of heaven. Feed me till I won't no more. Do I have any witnesses that knows the Lord will feed you the whole loaf? Won't he do it? Y'all know I had to give it to you. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he fight your battles? Won't he make your enemies your footstool? Won't he give you joy and sorrow? Won't he give you hope for tomorrow? Won't he dry your tears? Won't he, 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 and because I know I got to quit, I can have the whole loaf, because I know I can have every blessing that the Lord wants me to have, I will not quit, I will not get satisfied, I will not hold my head down, but I'm going to sing like the saints of old, guide me, oh, thou great Jehovah, pilgrims through this barren land, I am weak, but thou art mighty, hold me, hold me, with thy powerful hand, here it is, bread of heaven, bread of heaven, feed me, till I want no more, can you say yeah, yeah, aren't you glad, that you're not a dog, sitting down at the table, but you are God's child, and when all God's children, I done got happy in a whole sanctuary, when all God's children get together, what a time, what a time, we gonna sit down by the banks of God's river, say yeah, say yes. Yeah, I'm done. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. If your preaching don't make you happy, it can't make nobody else happy. Say yeah. Ah, yeah. I'm a, I'm a crumb snatcher. 
But God's going to take me from being a crumb snatcher to being a loaf carrier. Bread of heaven? <laughs> this new school church don't know that. Feed me till I want no more. That's, that's, you ain't got to settle for the loaves, the, the crumbs. Even in the, the table of this country, we ain't got to settle for what they give us. We tell them, oh no, we're not under the table. We're not on the menu. We're at the table. Because I'm at the table, I've got the right. I say, Lord, I don't care who else denies me. I don't care who else says I'm not qualified. Bread of heaven, feed me. Jesus Christ in your life. The opportunity is yours today for this same Jesus to become your Savior. All you've got to do is confess Jesus Christ. I don't know what maybe the particular process is in this season in, in the church, but I'm sure you can find out confess Jesus Christ as your Savior. You're not his dog, you're his child. Maybe you don't have a church and you're listening to me today. Once again, find out what the process is in that church. Maybe you're listening to me from somewhere else. Find out the process in that city. If you can find you a good church there, let the Lord have your life so that you don't have to settle but you can tell it, feed me till I want no more. Feed me till I no more. May the Lord bless you. May God's face continue to shine upon you and grant unto you peace. May the light of the Lord's countenance grant unto you the most awesome favor you could ever have. As you rise and you sit, you come and you go, you laugh, you cry, you work, and you play. It is in the name of the bread of life we pray. Amen. Listen, friend, I pray that this message has been a blessing to you. And if it's been a blessing to you, I want to challenge you at the place of your discipleship at the place of your salvation. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ in a real and perfect way, one of the ways that you can shift now is by joining or becoming a part of the body of Christ. I wanna challenge you because you've done everything else on your own, but this is a wonderful opportunity to have someone who's greater than yourself in the person of Jesus Christ. The Bible teaches us in Romans chapter 10 that if we confess with our mouth and believe with our heart the Lord Jesus that you can, you shall be saved. And this is a wonderful time for you to get to know him. And if you don't know him by relationship, this is an opportunity for you to invite him into your heart. So I wanna challenge you, and there's something on our screen right now where you can join online. That's right, you can join online. The Lord God sent you a prayer request and even an invitation to be a part of this body of Christ over 2,000 years ago. All you simply have to do is say yes. And so right now online, you can join by going to www.newfaithchurch.org forward slash membership. And maybe your challenge is not in relationship, 
but maybe your challenge is in fellowship. You've been saved. You've accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, but maybe your challenge has been you've had a sporadic relationship with God for a long time and even his church. I need you to know if being a part of the body of Christ is right, then certainly be, not being a part of the body of Christ has to be wrong. So I wanna challenge you, friend, to become a part of the body of Christ. Give God your heart. Give him your heart today. Listen, it's offering time, and we already know that you can't worship God just in your mouth, just in your hands, but ultimately you have to give God your substance. The Bible teaches us how important it is for us to be givers in the body of Christ. If God has been good to you, I want to challenge you at your place of biblical tithing. I want to challenge you at the place of biblical stewardship. And so this is a wonderful opportunity for you to give. And right now on your screen, there are ways that we provided for you to give right here at New Faith Church. If the message by Bishop McKissick has been a blessing to you, if the message has touched you in a miraculous way, if you feel the shift of God, I wanna challenge you to give at New Faith Church in person, or you can give by text, or you can give online, or you can give through Cash App, or you can give through mail. I wanna challenge every believer who's a part of this body of Christ to remember the importance of being biblical givers of being biblical tithers. Scripture teaches us that if we sow sparingly, we'll reap sparingly. But if we sow bountifully, we will also reap bountifully. And the Lord God has given unto us during this season so that you and I might be good stewards of what he has given us. The resources that he has given us, even in this pandemic, God has shown himself to be an able God. And how you show how good God has been is by making sure that the resources that he's given to you, that you provide unto his kingdom. So let's pray. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you now for this wonderful time to worship you in our giving. We pray now in the name of Jesus that our giving is acceptable in thy sight. God, we love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Listen, we pray that this summer shift has been a blessing to you. We started out on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then again on Sunday. We pray that during this season that you've seen the miraculous movement of God and that God has done some tremendous things for you on this weekend. We pray that you start your Monday off knowing that you can convey the light. We pray that you start this Monday off knowing that God in Christ Jesus gave you the power that you need to sustain you even in a pandemic. And so as we leave, as we often say, continue conveying the light and know that Jesus is the reason for the season. Have a blessed day.